Hello guys. So, dito po sa video na ito is tatagalogin ko lang po ito para hindi tayo nakakopyright nakakopyright claim ng kliyente. Um, there are terminologies written here and uh, later we will know about it kasi in this video actually isi-share ko sa inyo kung paano ba uh, ano ba ang nangyayari sa refinery paano ba na i-convert ang hydrocarbons or crude oil into gasoline, diesel and other um, petroleum products. So here dito po ako ng trabaho. This was my last project from mm, 2015 no 2014 of November up to the time na um, malis na ako dito because of the pandemic at nagbawas na rin po ang tao. So, ang nakikita po ngayon dito, ipapalanag ko sa inyo. Ito po yung CDO, CDU. What is CDU? CDU is Crude Distillation Unit. So, dito po nagsisimula um, in, dito sa portion na ito po um, nagsisimula ang process ng crude oil. Dito po siya din i-distilled. So, magigita mo halos lahat ng discipline ng construction ay involved dito simula sa excavation pagukay tapos mga karpintero labor um, mason electrician all trades are involved in this activity so ako po, ang trabaho ko po ay I was the training manager so in this work Diyan po ay hindi makapagtrabaho pag walang permit. So, I was doing the permit to work training and all other safety trainings, authorization trainings. I was the one doing it. Okay. So, sa parte pong ito, makikita nyo substation 111. There are so many substations that are located within a refinery because that is the building that contains all the control. Okay. Power supply, control, uh, automation, uh, ENI, electrical and instrumentation to control the bulbs, the motors that goes along or within the refinery. Okay, so ito yung kaparte pa rin ng CDU which is Crude Distillation Unit. Okay, so ito naman, Unit 112. What is ERDS? ERDS is Atmospheric Residual Desulpurization Unit. So, dito hinihiwalay po yung sulfur sulfur content ng hydrocarbons <clears throat> para siya ay ma-refined into a gasoline. So, unit 112 kanina ay 111, 112 ngayon unit 112 RDS which, is, which the meaning is atmospheric residual desulfurization unit okay so, itong project po na, na ito ay, these are three packages. So, I belong to the third package which is which, which, which having a, ang cost po, total cost po nito is 4 billion US dollars. And then, yung pinakamaraming tao po namin dito, the highest peak I was here, from 2014 of November until June of 2020 was 18,000 personnel. Alright, for the three package, for the three packages, expected po sa peak time was 60,000 personnel. Could you imagine that? The total cost of the project was 11 billion US dollars. Okay, so what is being shown here is unit 113. HOC. What is HOC? HOC is heavy oil cooking. And that is also the substation 113. Okay, so it, heavy oil cooling, not cooking, but cooling. Okay, so heavy oil on the process of being refined, it's going, it's going to, has to be cooled bago siya in up to 400 degrees centigrade. Okay, so substation 112. Now, I'm, why I'm explaining to you the meaning of this 
or this oil and gas terminology because I will show you the uh, the process basic information that you should know kung paano ba kinoconvert ang hydrocarbons or crude oil into a gasoline diesel jet fuel or the other petroleum products that is being produced in the refinery okay so you will see the substation 112 substation 100 there are so many substations in the refinery and then and then one unit 113 h2c what is h2c heavy oil cooling and then unit 114 hcr what is hcr hcr is hydrocracker or that is hydrocracking which means um it is mixed with uh, catalyst and it is being cracked or in ano siya tinatanggalan ng mga impurities para diretso na pag nagpunta siya sa or um, during the distillation the hydrocarbons or the crude oil itself is going to be to get refined Kung mapapansin po ninyo, this pipe rack is up to fourth level. So, kasi this video is taken by a professional third party drone shot professional. So, they are coming here every end of the month. They will be doing photo shoots and then this drone video flying over the refinery because that's going to be used in the reporting to our head office in Sharjah. Okay, so what is MOB? MOB is maintenance office building. So those are the buildings used in maintaining the whole refinery. Of course, a running refinery has to be maintained. Has to be, there are personnel who will look after the proper maintenance of all of the equipments. So this is Unit 115 KHT. So what is KHT? KHT is kerosene hydro treater. Okay, so I am trying to um, clearly explain to you what are those oil and gas terminology. Substation 116. There are so many substations. They're covering, um, or, or the refinery itself is subdivided, where a particular substation is covering a certain area, which motor or controls that goes to the substation and the supply of power okay so this is unit 116 dht what is dht diesel um, dht is diesel hydro treater so if you would know our refinery is the whole thing is it's it composed of different parts it's just like if you will open a, a radio or a transistor radio, old one, you will see there are so many IC, there are so many components that belongs so that the that radio could operate, could function. The same thing with the refinery. Okay, unit 117 NHT. What is NHT? NHT is NAPTA Hydro Treater Unit. So NAPTA is... A, um, a petroleum product also taken from the hydrocarbons and then this again is substation 214 so if you would note here in 2017 the um, the the civil work is almost finished excavation has been done they're doing backfilling they're putting the pipes because in the refinery there is excavation there will be above and below the ground pipes different types of pipes jerry pipes carbon steel pipes all of those materials are here yeah, could you imagine this is a four billion dollar project okay so during this year 2007 as if my memory serves me right we got a 16 or 17,000 manpower. Of course, that is comprised, it comprises all of the people work, working for the refinery. 
Of course, there are people who are staying in the office. There are people who are staying in the fabrication shop. But in my rough estimate, those who are on site actually doing the pipe racks on the buildings, working in one place, roughly there will be 12, 10 to 12,000 who are on site. Okay, so now this is the unit main pipe rack, north to south. So this is, these pipes are coming from the existing refinery. So from here, now if you will see that orange color pipe, that is live already because there is a portion in uh, Min Abdullah 2 because this is divided into two. Where we are working is Min Abdullah 1, that side is Min Abdullah 2. There is a part there that's already in operation. So what they did is they, 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 there was some kind of safety um, barricading provided to mark it down that it is already live. Okay. So, okay, MOB1, maintenance office building. So at this point, you, you, you're looking at the um, rooftop, MOB2, rooftop. Now they're doing some um, finishing or coating, some asphalting, waterproofing. That's what they are doing. So unit 112, atmospheric residual, atmospheric residual desulfurization unit. That is the part where the um, sulfur content is being taken out or being taken from the hydrocarbons or the crude oil. Unit 212 ERDS. <clears throat> so there's still a lot of job to be done. You see the the installation of structural steel components of the base of the boilers, columns are still in progress. But at this point of construction, you can see that it is already forming as a it looks like a refinery already okay so pipes are installed you will see um, scaffoldings and then you would know there are so many cranes or cranes are all over the place so this is where accident happens at this um, part of the construction so there will be thousands of safety supervisors roaming around construction supervisors managing the activities okay so we're almost covering all of the parts or locations within the Mina Abdullah 2 or Mina Abdullah 1 refinery actually I Medyo iniwasan ko pong banggitin yung pangalan kasi bawal ko ito. Anyway, andito na ako. At saka, pinagbabawal nila eh. Kahit sa Google, pag tinignan yan, makikita niya naman yan eh. But of course, if they will say it's not allowed, we have to abide by the law. Because they own the plant, they own the refinery, it's their rules. Okay po, so itong sumulod na video na ito, Ito ay, yung status niya ay nasa 2019 na po ito. So, the refinery looks like it is finished but still not. Still a lot of job to do. The, uh, the uh, pre-commissioning is ongoing. And then, <clears throat> some um, punch list being cleared by, with the subcontractors. Okay. So there's still a lot of job to do at this part of the job. This is um, 2019, um, October or November like that. So you see, it looks like a refinery already. But as what I've said, there's still a lot of job to do. So now up to the time that 
I or we, 50% of the workforce of our company was um, terminated, some were demobilized, and simply because of that biggest issue that we have now, even now, which is the pandemic. So the rise in infection started in, in the country of Kuwait in 20. No, that was March, your first week of April. Uh, the lockdown was declared and start the termination of employees, not only with our company, not, not only with Petropac, but with other companies working in Kuwait. So there was a massive of um, people going home, you know. Okay, so the next part of this is how um, crude oil and carbohydro um, carbohydrates are being processed. So I'll put Refining it on next. begins with okay. a process called distilling. After oil, process of mixing different refinery products to make finished petroleum fuels. Gasoline, for example, is blended to achieve octane standards, creating the grades of gasoline you see at the pump regular, mid-grade, and premium that are necessary to meet the needs of specific engine types. Treating is a process used to produce cleaner gasoline, which helps protect both the environment and our health. Gasoline molecules contain impurities like sulfur that can be removed. When the molecules are heated, and come in contact with a special catalyst, a chemical reaction occurs that strips the sulfur away. These sulfur compounds are used as fertilizers and in pharmaceuticals. Nothing goes to waste in a refinery. Crude oil comes out of earth it is in raw state and cannot be used directly in any way. It must be refined to make it into usable products. Depending on the type of crude oil, it is treated by different refining processes to turn it into many useful end products. Mainly these products are fuels, lubricating oils, waxes, chemicals, plastics and many other products used every day in modern society. The refining process takes place in three steps to change the crude oil into finished products. In this process the first step is to separate the crude oil into its naturally occurring components. This is known as separation and is accomplished by applying heat through a process called distillation. To simplify the process we consider one tower where distillation process is taking place. Crude oil is supplied to a furnace before the distillation tower where crude oil is heated and vaporized and it becomes the crude oil mixture. The vapor and liquid mixture is then fed into the bottom section of the tower. The feed section is the hottest point in the distillation tower and can reach as high as 400 degrees C. Components that are still liquid at this elevated temperature become the tower's bottom product. Components that are in vapor form rise up the tower through a series of distillation stages. The temperature decreases as the vapors rise through the tower and the components condense. The yield from a distillation tower refers to the relative percentage of each of the separated components, known as product streams. Products from the distillation tower range from gases at the top to very heavy, viscous liquids at the bottom. In all cases, these product streams are still considered unfinished and require further processing to become useful products. Light products, light ends are further separated into propane, normal butane, and isobutene. This stream is often referred to as liquefied petroleum gas, LPG, and is sold as a cooking and heating fuel. Naphtha could be blended into motor gasoline, but is more likely sent to a catalytic reforming unit for octane improvement. K2 
Kerosene, is generally treated and used as jet fuel. Heavier distillate streams, are also treated and blended into finished diesel fuel or home heating oil or are further processed in conversion units such as fluidized catalytic cracking and hydrocracking. The routing of these streams will vary as product demand changes to either maximize diesel production or gasoline production. Lowest end of columns, asphalt, power generation.